How are Catholic homes different? This video actually came about because a couple of weeks ago we were out getting the mail and one of our neighbors stopped us in the front yard and started asking us about the different statues she was seeing. She said the guy with the bird looks kind of familiar, but she wanted to know who he was. Then she was also surprised to learn that the angel statue we have in our yard is actually in honor of our guardian angels and also a good reminder for us to ask for their help. So she was very kind and genuinely interested in learning about all the different statues. And that got us thinking, if the outside of our home is different from our neighbors, what would she think of the inside? So today we're looking at 10 ways that Catholic homes are different. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, in a Catholic home, you might see some writing on or above the top of the front door. What is that? That is the traditional Epiphany blessing that a lot of Catholics do on January 6th, which is the Feast of Epiphany. What it is, it's a home blessing for the new year, so it always starts with the date. This is 2023, so you'll see the number 20 at the start. And then you have the letters C plus M plus B. That stands for the three wise men, it's their initials, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And then at the end, you have the number 23 for 2023. So it changes every year. The blessing is written with blessed chalk, which we can get at church. And it doesn't leave any permanent mark. You can just wipe it off every year and start over. So it's just a really neat tradition and a great way to start the new year. So number two, most Catholic families are going to have a bottle of holy water somewhere around the house. We get ours from church for free where it's been blessed by a priest. So it is a very powerful sacramental that helps us draw closer to God and protects us from evil. A lot of Catholic families have a holy water font by the door so they can bless themselves when they go in or out. That is not us. Ours died, so we're using the bottles for now, but we are in the market for a new one. She's not, but we are. <laughs> Pagan Cat is not. Bishop Beagle is just taking it all in. Another thing that you might find only in a Catholic home is a kitchen Madonna. This beautiful tradition is from Eastern Europe and it shows the Blessed Mother with the child Jesus and it's a reminder that just as she cared for Jesus, she will help care for us. Mary was a working mom just like the rest of us. She definitely took care of a family and a house. Our Kitchen Madonna came from a yard sale, so we don't know anything about her history, but we definitely love her and we love having her in the kitchen. So number four, if you are a Catholic home and you probably have a set of dried palm branches on a shelf somewhere, these are also blessed, so they're also sacramentals, and we wave them in church each year on Palm Sunday as a remembrance of Jesus's triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. So we hold on to these during the year and then our church collects them before each Lent to burn them. And then those ashes are used on Ash Wednesday. In most Catholic homes, you will also find Catholic calendars. Maybe not just one, maybe two, maybe more, because a lot of times these are given out for free right before the new year. So Catholic calendars are very interesting. They usually have very beautiful Catholic art. Now sometimes the art is very nice and inspiring and then sometimes the art is not quite what I would pick out. Yeah, like this one, I probably wouldn't have picked Jail and Cicero, you know, for April, but in, there you go. The great thing about Catholic calendars is that in addition to having all the normal holidays in it that you know everyone celebrates, it also has all the church holidays in it. And not only that, but all the feast days of all the saints. So it's great every month at a glance, you can tell whose feast day it is or what big church holiday is coming up. So these are definitely fun. So next in any Catholic home, you are very likely to find a bunch of copies of the Magnificat laying around. This is a beautiful Catholic devotional that follows the Liturgy of the Hours prayer tradition. 
and these things come monthly so they stack up we definitely have quite a few floating around the house and along the same lines any catholic book fans as you know we are we often have just bookshelves dedicated to all of our catholic books Many Catholic homes also will have a beautiful home altar and a lot of different religious pictures and statues. Right now in our house, we have this beautiful traveling shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Pilgrim Queen of the family. It is definitely a work of art, but we also have various pictures of saints around. These again are sacramentals. They're meant to draw our mind and hearts to God. We have tons of pictures and statues around, and we even have a healthy dose of good old fashioned Catholic refrigerator art. So next is a fun one. A lot of families have a big dress up bin for their kids and in a Catholic home you are well more than likely going to find saints costumes in that dress up bin. It's a fun tradition to dress up like different saints on All Saints Day November 1st. So we have collected quite a lot of different saint costumes over the years. For instance, if you are going to be a crusader, of course you need a crusader cross, but this could also work for St. George. If you are thinking that, oh, I would like to be St. Michael this year, we've got you covered. Yeah, okay, so yeah, there's a white robe, you're good to go. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, um, yeah. the St. Francis robe. Yeah, the St. Francis robe, you know, does, doesn't take much for that, right? St. Francis, the man of poverty, so he's got his little, you know, boom, I'm St. Francis. And then my favorite, I've actually worn this one several times at Vacation Bible School to be St. Kateri. So yeah, definitely, I don't think you would find all these saint costumes in just any old house. All right, in a Catholic home, of course, you are going to find rosaries, and in some homes, you will also find rosary holders on the wall. I took this one from the wall by my bed. It has St. Joseph on it, and I love it for two reasons. Number one, I love having a dedicated place to put my rosary. I always know where to find it, and it doesn't get all tangled up. And also, I love this one because my kids made this for me from a kit back in the day, and so it's a sweet reminder of their childhood. They also made this one for me with the Blessed Mother, so you can still get these kids. It's a really fun project, and again, unique to Catholic homes. So last but not least, number 10, Catholic homes have crucifixes, not just crosses. We have Jesus on the cross because it reminds us of the price that he paid for our salvation. And this cross is actually a really neat old cross. It was formerly used by a priest when making sick calls. So it actually comes apart and has these like little compartments in it for blessed candles and anointing oil. So that's really cool. So of course, we each had to pick out a bonus one. This list was very hard to get down. And for me, I had to go with the painted Saint Peg dolls. I don't know why, I feel like these are a staple in every Catholic household. So many of us have done swaps or just painted them for their kids. So I have Saint Philomena here, and then I have Saint Dominic, and I'll put some video on the screen, but we just have rows and rows of these Peg dolls in our schoolroom. So this one is definitely a staple in a Catholic home. bonus item was definitely shopping bags. Now a lot of homes will have beautiful shopping bags and different totes with Bible verses and those are wonderful and we definitely have some of those. But only in a Catholic home will you find shopping bags like this. This has St. Therese, the little flower on it. Then another favorite, St. Michael the Archangel. 
And then this one has a quote from a very famous Catholic saint, Padre Pio, pray, hope, and don't worry. So we definitely love our Catholic shopping bags. They are great for starting up conversation at the grocery store. Okay, so there you go. A quick look at 10 different ways that Catholic homes are different. So let us know down in the comments if you have any questions and also if there's anything that you would add to this list. Or if you're a Catholic and you just saw anything that looked familiar and you can relate, what unique Catholic items do you have in your home? So we hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.